Hey guys, welcome back. You're still tuned into Trading R. It is currently a 30 point cut that we are seeing on the Nifty. We had moved very close to the flat line, but we're uh, back pretty much at the low point of the day right now, 18,013. Um, so let's see if we, looks like we might even break that 18,000 level. But to discuss the markets, we are now joined by a guest, Rohit Srivastava, founder and strategist at IndiaCharts.com, joins us now to discuss the markets. Uh, Rohit, good morning. Thanks a lot for joining us. This is Pavitra. Um, you know, how do you see it set up now? For the past few days, all of this week, pretty much, we have been facing resistance at that 18,250 kind of level. We do have the earnings season coming up, you know, next week. We have the budget after that. Where do you think the market is headed and uh, do you think that usual pre-budget rally that we get is likely? So, uh, you know, I started December by thinking that, you know, you'd see a possibly significant decline that month. But how December ended is that we didn't even see a 10% dip. Uh, and also by the end of the month, both in India and the US, uh, we had the CBOE put call ratio and the volume put call ratio here both spike up pretty significantly, which means that the number of puts being traded relative to uh, the number of calls that are being traded was very, very high. Now, that gives us one uh, potential short-term oversold reading uh, to, uh, to really deal with. I think a lot of selling got done at the end of December, which therefore creates room for a near-term bounce-back rally in January. Uh, and then, of course, like you said, we have the event of the budget, we have our earnings season, and all of that can actually aid uh, some amount of this recovery. So I think there's a case uh, that markets head higher from here. I would put support at, uh, for the Nifty at around 17,992. That's the previous swing low or 61% of this initial bounce uh, closer to around uh, uh, 17,960. And the upside could be at least to start with 61% of the entire fall, which is around 18,000. Uh, 460. So that is that is the risk reward we are really looking at in the near term. Uh, I think for the bank nifty, similar levels could be around 42,600 to 42,300 on the downside and around 44,800 to the upside. Now, 44,800 for the bank nifty could actually end up meaning a, a new high as well. And uh, But in the nifty, we are still not thinking that till we really get past uh, 18,460. So, so that's how we are positioning right now, thinking that there is a case for a near-term rally. Uh, and then we'll watch out whether it can extend a little bit as well. Uh, but initially look for yeah, 18,460 on the way up. Okay, so there's a case for a near-term rally. And what do you think could lead to that if it does play out? You spoke about the bank nifty, but where else do you see leadership on the upside? So PSU stocks, I think, which have been attracting a lot of the attention, a couple of pockets inside of that, uh, you know, could get attention. So I'm thinking of oil marketing companies in specific because we've seen a lot of movement in oil prices recently. Uh, even if they come down, spreads for OMCs can actually go up. So, so that's an interesting place uh, within the, uh, you know, uh, PSU lot. Uh, there's there are also stocks like uh, within the oil, uh, you know, ones like Reliance or ONGC, which could could see interest coming back uh, because of that. Uh, the uh, uh, the other place to think of, uh, which is more defensive uh, in a market where we are still thinking that, you know, interest rates are still being hiked and there could be a slowdown, is to look at pharmaceuticals. You've seen a 50% retracement in the pharma index after the rally it saw in the last two months. I think that's one defensive place where money may get allocated uh, given the risks that people see ahead. And so uh, it may be good to have some allocation towards pharma uh, from a slightly more medium-term perspective. Okay. Uh, can you tell me the level that you see on the Nifty on the way up, Rohit? So 18,460 is okay. what uh, I'm looking at to start with. All right. And in pharmaceutical, what is it that you like or you're betting on? Because, you know, pharma has seen very divergent moves. On one hand, you've got a supply which has done well, it's been resilient. But on the other hand, you've, been, you've got Lupin, which has been a drag. Uh, so which ones in the pharma sector would you bet on, the stocks? Yeah, uh, so while I mention stocks, I just need to mention that, you know, we don't, we don't do any advisory. So uh, whatever interest I'm showing is, uh, is more personal. Uh, so I do see a good setup for, you know, stocks that are beaten down, uh, you know, the likes of Lupin, Walkhart, for example, uh, where we've taken some interest. Uh, so uh, they are pretty, they've retraced almost 80% of the gains they'd made or 90% of the gains they'd actually made in, uh, you know, 2008 at the beginning. Uh, so that is also interesting. At the same time, you have 
uh, leaders on the other side uh, which have done well throughout this time frame like uh, like sun pharma which is also an index stock so it could be a mix of these uh, one could also then delve into some mid cap uh, space uh, stocks that are showing relative strength uh, uh, so it could be a mix of things uh, even even say dr reddy if you talk about it's actually done nothing uh, for a pretty long time it is just slower it's just a slower mover so we haven't any, taken any interest there but uh, I wouldn't rule out that it can actually pick up some momentum because it's retraced. I think sixty-one percent of the gains that it made into uh, you know in uh, 2021, and uh, given that uh, it can uh, you know find support and pick up as well. All right, that is on the pharma space. Roy, the next uh, you know space I want to ask you about is just what we're seeing with crude. You know, right now it's under seventy-eight. Where do you see this headed and then would you, you know, play this? Would you look at the OMCs or any of the oil companies based on what's going on with crude? Yeah, so I did mention the OMCs are a, a very interesting setup. They've been underperformers for, uh, you know, uh, uh, a long time, I think many years now. Uh, but they are closer to the bottom end of their, uh, you know, two-year, three-year ranges. So therefore, the risk reward is pretty favorable. And falling oil prices will help. So what I think is happening to oil is the recent failure for it to really get past, uh, you know, $85, $87 means that we may be heading back to, uh, you know, a much lower level, maybe closer to $60, $62, which is from where that last rally started, uh, you know, more than a year back uh, before we got the Russian crisis and then we crossed 100 So I think there's a case that, you know, prices actually go back mm -hmm. down there. And that could, uh, you know, OMCs are an easy bet on that as a beneficiary of that uh, trend. Okay, all right. We'll leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining in and have a great day. Let's slip into a quick break. Up next, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella tells CNBC TV18 that India is an exception in the challenging global scenario. He also warns of a very difficult two years for the tech sector. Excerpts from that conversation coming up in just a bit. Stay tuned.